Our Sunday School lesson this week focuses in on liberty. We are taking a look at liberty as we see there in the opening verse of our Sunday School lesson for today. Paul calls for us to stand fast in the liberty for which we have been made free by Christ. So before we can even dig further into that first verse, I feel like we need to speak about liberty. We need to speak about uh, the freedom uh, that Paul is speaking of here. And I feel like we need to speak about it so that we can have a great understanding of what this freedom is. When we say that we have been made free, that would imply that we were once held captive to something. So Christ freed us from something that once held all of us in captivity. So what have we been freed from? Well, we, all of us today who are of faith, who genuinely believe, we were once held in the captivity, in the bondage of sin. Sin held on to us. It enchained us, right? And we were obedient to the way of sin. We were obedient to the way of wickedness. And again, we understand that sin and wickedness is everything that is disobedient, everything that goes against the way of God. And so we were held captive by that. We were held captive by living in disobedience against God. There are many today who have not been made free because they have no faith in Christ. And so they still live in the bondage of sin. They live with sin having authority over them. They live with sin having rule over their lives. They are obedient to their own way rather than being obedient to the way of the Lord. Now we know that all of those who are obedient in the way of Christ, we know that our obedience leads to a great reward. It leads to a prize, and that is a heavenly reward. It is a heavenly prize. Whereas those who live in disobedience, they have a reward, but their reward is not with the Lord. Their reward is up in a place where God will not be present for all of eternity. We call that place hell. There is a spiritual death that awaits all of those who live in disobedience. That is the end result of living in the bondage of sin. None of us should want to live in the bondage of sin. We should all desire a better end result than essentially our spiritual death, our spiritual destruction. We should want to live on forever and ever, and we should desire to do that living in the care, living with the Lord. That is what we should desire to do. So when we believe in Christ, Christ led us away from the bondage of sin. Christ loosened those shackles from our ankles, and we were again made free by Christ. So. Paul, he again calls for us there in the first verse. He calls for us to stand fast in this liberty. So in other words, Paul calls for us to be strong. He calls for us to be confident in our freedom from sin. We believers, we ought not be ashamed of our faith in Christ. Let us remember our faith in Christ is faith in the truth. The truth being that we were once sinners, or that all of us were sinners, and that all of us, because we were sinners, we all fell short of the glory of God. Yet, because we have believed in Christ, we have everlasting life. Because we have believed in Christ, we will not perish. That is what Christ said to Nicodemus in the third chapter of John's Gospel. So, we believe as we saw in the very first lesson this quarter, we believe in the work of reconciliation. We believe in that work that Christ did for us. Therefore, we believe that we have, through our faith, been restored to the Lord. We have been made whole. As Christ said, the truth has set us free. Now, when we take a look at the next handful of verses there, from the 6th through the 6th verse, we'll see why Paul was writing to the Galatians to stand fast, to be confident, to stand strong in their faith. The reason why Paul was saying that to the Galatians here in the 5th chapter is because their faith was being challenged. We'll see there in the 2nd through the 6th verse here. 
that their faith was being challenged by those who were preaching circumcision. So we have to remember that the Greeks, they did not practice the same things as the Jews. The Jews, we have to remember, they lived by the law. And at that point in time, there were Jews who were beginning to follow in the way of Christ. So the Jews, according to the law, they practice circumcision. And this practice of circumcision, it essentially had become tradition for them. But again, circumcision, it wasn't a big deal for the Galatians. It wasn't a big deal for the Greeks. And this was something that offended the Jews in the way in which they went. And we find in scripture that there were Jews who believed that if the Gentiles, if the Greeks did not practice a circumcision, then they would not truly be saved. So these Jews, they were calling on the Greeks to take up circumcision if, if they truly wanted to be saved. So we find that these Jews were essentially abusing the liberty for which they had received in Christ. They had believed in Christ. They had been made free by Christ, but they was then turning around and they were abusing this liberty by trying to force a way on the Galatians that was essentially not of their way, but they were trying to do it in a manner of saying, hey, you can't be saved. You can't really be saved if you aren't practicing this tradition. Whereas the Galatians were simply trying to live by faith in Christ. This to me is one of the most dangerous things that can happen within the, the body of Christ. That is within the entire congregation of all of those that believe. Where we as believers can hinder one another in our walk of faith. Because we practice one thing, but another practices something else. When we do that, we are abusing our freedom. The freedom, again, which we have been made free through our faith in Christ. The Jews, as we see there in the 7th through the 10th verse, they may have felt that they were actually doing right by calling on the Greeks to participate in circumcision. Because again, this was a part of their way. This was a part of their tradition. This was part of the law. So they may have felt that they were actually doing the right thing. But from a spiritual standpoint, I want you to understand that they were doing more harm than they were doing good. And the reason why they were doing more harm than they were doing good is because they were essentially putting a burden on the Galatians who had faith in Christ. The Galatians, they walked in faith, they believed. We see Paul even said there, hey, you were doing well in the faith, but who is it that hindered you? Well, the ones who were hindering them were those who were other believers. And these believers, again, they were Jews, but they were Jewish believers. They had faith in Christ. Yet these Jewish believers, they were hindering the Galatians. You see, the last thing that we ought to ever do in our faith, the last thing we ought to do is ever hinder each other. We should never hinder one another from, from being in fellowship with the Lord. That's the last thing that we should do. As Paul said to the Romans in the 14th chapter of Romans and in the 13th verse, Paul said that we ought not to strive to ever put a stumbling block, a cause for falling in our brother or in our sister's way. The last thing that you and I should do is call each, cause each other to stumble, to fall, to err in our faith. If anything, what we should be doing as brothers and sisters in Christ is we should be loving each other. We shouldn't be burdening one another. That's unfortunately what the Jews were doing to the Galatians. And again, that same thing happens today. Uh, many people will try to deny it, but we believers, we can do more harm to each other uh, than we like to admit. We can burden one another. We can hinder one another. We can keep one another from growing where in which 
we should actually be helping one another uh, to grow in our faith. We'll see here in the 13th and the 15th verse, again, where Paul even again calls for us to love one another. He calls for us to essentially uplift each other so that none of us stumble, so that none of us err, so that none of us fall. This, again, is how Paul teaches us to live in the liberty that we have received from Christ. Should we err, which is certainly going to happen because all of us are fallible creatures. All of us are capable of committing sin. All of us are capable of being disobedient. But should we fall, we should again help each other. We should use our liberty to pick each other up, to edify one another. Liberty, again, I tell you that it should never be used to bring harm upon your brother or upon your sister in the faith. Our liberty, again, should be used to uplift. You see, frankly, I believe that this is true spiritually, and I believe that this is true in the world as well. All of us, we should be doing a better job of loving one another. The last thing that we should be doing is tearing each other down, but that's sadly how it seems our world works today, where liberty, where freedom is abused. Instead of uplifting, we seemingly live in a world, we live in a society today that does more harm than it does good by tearing our neighbors down instead of giving each other a leg up. Our society, the world, I believe, would truly be a better place if we weren't so selfish if we actually live by love first rather than by our selfishness first. So we'll see here as we come to a close here in the 16th and the 17th verse, Paul calls for us to walk in the spirit. He calls for us to, to essentially live by the spirit rather than again having sin rule over us and, and walk in sin, call, Paul, he calls for us to, to walk in the spirit, the spirit again, which is given to us by the Lord. The spirit again is love. The spirit again will call to our remembrance all of the things that Christ taught us. So the way in which we walk, if we are walking in the spirit, if we are allowing the spirit to guide us, will be to walk in love. It wouldn't be to walk in hate. So we'll be walking in the best way that we possibly can to uplift one another rather than to tear each other down. Walking by the Spirit, it's not always going to be an easy thing for us to do. Let's just be real about that. As Paul said in his letter to the Romans, we often desire to do what is right spiritually. We often desire to do what is good. But there are several times where our flesh says, no, 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 do something else. Our carnal mind, our old man, often has a bad habit of rearing and raising his head uh, when we are doing our best to, to walk as a new creature. So when Paul speaks about our natures here in the 16th and the 17th verse, speaking of our nature that is of the spirit and our nature that is of the flesh and he tells us plainly there that these two natures they are contrary to one another so let us understand we have two natures as believers that that are present within us we have our new person our new man we would say and we have our old person we have our old man and these two are always butting heads they are always going back and forth with each other they're like the 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 character the, the picture uh, the cartoons that you could think of where you have an angel sitting on one shoulder and you have the devil sitting on the other shoulder and the angel is saying hey do this good thing but the devil on this shoulder is saying no no don't do that do this we have that war going on within us and we're always picking and choosing uh which one which way that we should go so these two natures, they are, again, they are contrary to one another. But I again tell you today 
that we should do our very best to to walk in the spirit. Okay, there is a war that is taking place within us in our spiritual man. We should desire. We should desire that our spiritual man wins the new creature. We should desire for it to win. And the one who is of genuine faith should practice discipline and we should learn to be strong in our discipline. We should learn to be strong in our faith so that we can win this battle so that we can always do what is good so that we can always do what is right so that we can always do what is holy so that we can always do what is righteous. In other words, we should desire to always put our liberty, our freedom. We should always desire to put it to its best use. And again, its best use is for our profit, but it is also for the profit for all of those that are around us as well. So what did we learn in our Sunday school lesson today? Well, we learned today that it is a blessing for us to be free from the bondage of sin. We no longer live in the captivity of sin. We now live in liberty, which we have again been made free by Christ. We now live under the love of God. We now live under, as you may have heard said before, we live under grace. We have learned today that we should not abuse our liberty. We should not use our liberty to harm those that are around us. We have learned today that we should use our liberty to uplift. We should use our liberty to edify, especially those who are our brothers and our sisters in Christ. We should never use our liberty to bring harm to anyone, especially those who are trying to walk in faith. We should be encouraging them in their growth and in their walk of faith. We have also learned today that we should walk in the spirit. We should allow the spirit to have rule over us, not sin, not wickedness. We should walk in the spirit. We should be obedient in the way of Christ. Okay. All right. So that is our Sunday school lesson for today. I hope that you enjoyed our lesson. And I hope that you share our lesson with someone somewhere as well. And I hope that you'll come back for our Sunday school lesson next week. If you want to dive further into our Sunday school lesson this week, head over to newfoundfaith.org to where you can read the commentary for this week's lesson. You can also listen to a full audio commentary of this week's lesson as well. Again, until next time, I'll continue to keep all of you lifted up in my prayers, and I pray that the Lord continues to keep and bless all of you.